think it's a, it has something to do with German history. Uh, Germany was a very interesting, <coughs> uh, especially Berlin was a very interesting <coughs> city, and Germany was really leading in culture in the 1920s and 30s. And all those, all this was killed by uh, the Nazi regime and. Uh, they, they stopped this culture, they killed the people, or they had, people had to emigrate, they went to America, and there they founded Hollywood. <laughs> and uh, no, Hollywood was founded before. But, um, I mean, the culture, it was not only after the World War II, 1945 was finished, it was not only that the houses were destroyed, but Germans had killed their own culture. Uh, stupid Germans. <laughs> and suddenly they woke up and said, oh, what have we done now? And so in the 50s, there were very careful attempts of music. They played a bit jazz, they played a little rock and roll. <laughs> uh, not really interesting, yeah, but... Uh, and that in the 60s there was a new generation grew up, young people who were then 20, 25, uh, and they wanted to create something new, something experimental, something again which is maybe German or some, some identity, again some, some cultural progress. And then there were the influences from America and from, they came from, from uh, I mean, the flower power and, uh, and the folk and the poets and, and uh, from, um, from England here, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. And so there was a very big demand for, young, for the young generation to create something. <coughs> and the good thing was, uh, the good thing and the bad thing was there was no musical structure. It was not a business. It was all experimental and everything in a way self-made. So there were no managers, there were no agents, there were no record companies. Uh, all the people were doing it by themselves. And this had, I think, this is the reason why it had such a wide aspect of creativity, because it was crazy in all aspects. There were folk music, political, the political development also played a role, the 68 uh, uh, political development. Um, and so there were uh, yeah, four political songs, folk songs, there were free jazz, there was uh, electroacoustic crazy experiments, avant-garde type, so very, very uh, broad or wide uh, uh, field of experiments that maybe could not happen in England and maybe not in America because there was still, there was a business structure. So a band like Cream, for example, they had to play the blues in the beginning and in the end. In the middle they were free to play something else. Ashra Temple, nobody cared. So we can play free from the beginning until the end. So we didn't have to, we didn't have to follow certain rules to make it, uh, uh, yeah, there were no agents, no managers, and uh, <laughs> so we could do what we want. Yeah. The 90s was again a period interesting, especially in Berlin. Uh, it's just because of, again, of a political situation, because of the reunification of Germany, and especially West and East Berlin, because these cities were split, they were divided for 40 years, 40 years, yeah, 40 years. Yeah. I had a friend in school, Hartmut Enke, with whom I founded a band, just playing cover versions, trying to imitate or trying to make something similar, so just for fun in school. And we did that for one year, and uh, yeah, it was really fun. We had a nice place in Berlin, uh, a studio which was uh, in, a, in a music school, uh, 
it was run by a, a Swiss uh, composer, Thomas Kessler, who was experienced in electronic music and in composition, avant-garde composition at the time, and so he could help. And this was a place where also many of the groups uh, in Berlin, end of the 60s, beginning of the 70s, played uh, local and international. That was, that was a place where Tangerine Dream started there, where Agitation Free started there. Uh, Klaus Schulze, who was with Tangerine Dream, then with, um, when he left, with, um, I found with him the, the Ashma Temple. And so this was the place where all these musicians met uh, in 68, 69. The 60s were the period of the great guitar heroes. And so what can you do? So you have to make something different. And I thought maybe going into this direction of minimalism uh, and to start composing in this direction. I like blues very much uh, in between, between this cover band, the first cover band, and then uh, we had a very experimental band called Bad Joe, and we, we performed only one time, then we had to leave the stage <laughs> because we were a bit, was maybe a bit too young for that. <laughs> for my solo recording, it was that I'm that I've had more time to really concentrate on one instrument and on one concept to, to, to make a piece for one organ or to make a piece for ten organs or whatever. And uh, so I, sw I came from the electric organ and then to the first string sounds ensembles, then to yeah the first type of, of mini synthesizer, the mono synthesizer, monophonic synthesizers like the mini MOOC, the Arp Odyssey, most popular, and then the polyphonic synthesizers like Prophet or Oberheim. And so it, it went step by step and I increased my equipment and it got more and more and more and more. So I got used to play with it and every new type of instrument was incorporated within my studio setup so I had more and more <laughs> and, and I was used to play them all together. I did many recordings and E2E4 is just one of his recordings but it was a moment which was everything was perfect. Uh, everything was the technique was perfect, uh, the music was floating and I don't know and so I just uh, recorded and then yeah and of course I did not expect this output, but uh, I, uh, I just played what I like, <laughs> so, uh, but I'm very happy about it. To be honest, I'm not so much into dance music, <laughs> because uh, uh, this is what people always ask me, because uh, E3-4 is maybe the most uh, uh, interesting piece. Uh, but I never considered or I never composed it as a dance piece. And uh, the first time when somebody told me it was played in clubs, I couldn't believe it. I didn't, couldn't imagine that people would dance to it because it's a very soft, I mean, it's very rhythmic, but it's not very boom, not very strong rhythm. This was another period with what was the 90s, was again a period interesting, especially in Berlin, it's just because of, again, of a political situation, because of the reunification of Germany. There was a meeting between East and West, and uh, <clears throat> there was also a very basic uh, situation that in East Berlin there were many, many places uh, nobody cared, and, and there were, I don't know, factories or... or big warehouses, and they were empty, and no, so there was space, and nobody claimed uh, property, so clubs could open anywhere, and <laughs> it was really fun. <laughs> That's really the, a phenomenon with Berlin, maybe, that uh, it, this also, it's, always, it's, it's always, again, a place where people like to meet and to work, and where people from everywhere come and make something. And that was the same in the 20s and in the 30s. Yeah.